The First Battle of Quang Tri resulted in the first major victory for the People's Army of Vietnam during the Easter Offensive of 1972. Quang Tri Province was a major battleground for the opposing forces during the Vietnam War. As South Vietnamese soldiers were gradually replacing their American counterparts, North Vietnam's General Van Tien Dung was preparing to engage three of his divisions in the province. Just months before the battle, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam deployed its newly formed 3rd Division to the areas along the Vietnamese demilitarized zone to take over former U.S. bases. North Vietnamese forces deployed against the inexperienced ARVN 3rd Division included the Pavan 304th, 308th and 324B Divisions. Chapter 1 – Background The ARVN 3rd Division was generally responsible for Quang Tri Province. Its headquarters under the command of Brigadier General Vu Van Gyai, former deputy commander of the 1st Division, was located at I-2 Combat Base. The newly activated 56th and 57th regiments were deployed over a series of strongpoints and fire support bases dotting the area immediately south of the DMZ and from the coast, to the mountains in the west. The 56th Regiment was headquartered at Camp Carroll while the 57th Regiment, was located at Firebase C-1. The 2nd Regiment occupied Camp Carroll with two of its battalions at Firebase C-2. Camp Carroll was the linchpin of the ARVN Northern and Western Defense Line situated on Route 9, the main road west to the Laos border. The division's 11th Armored Cavalry Squadron was located at Landing Zone Sharon south of Quang Tri, 18-9 in addition to its organic units the division had operational control of the two Marine Brigades of the General Reserve. The 147th Marine Brigade was headquartered at Mylorp Camp 2 km east of Camp Carroll, and the 258th Brigade was at Firebase Nancy. The Marines and 56th Regiment presented a strong west-facing defense as this was assumed to be the most likely direction of attack, 19 On 30 March the 3rd Division was in the middle of rotating its units between the various defensive positions. The 56th Regiment was taking over Camp Carroll, Firebase KGO and Firebase Fuller from the 2nd Regiment. The 57th Regiment was taking over the area from Dong Ha Combat Base north to the DMZ and east to the coast. The 2nd Regiment was taking over the combat bases north of Kamlo Combat Base, 23-4 The commander of the 56th Regiment was Lt. Col. Pham Van Ding who had fought in the Battle of Hue and Operation Lam Sun 719, 107, 203. Chapter 2 – Battle The battle for Quang Tri began at midday on 30 March with preparatory artillery barrages on the key areas of the province. Meanwhile, infantry assaults supported by tanks overran outposts and fire bases. The lightning speed of the Pavan attacks on those positions delivered a great shock to the soldiers of the ARVN, who were largely unprepared for the onslaught. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Camp Carroll during the first hours of the Easter Offensive, Camp Carroll was one of the first targets to come under the Pavan Artillery Barrage. The Pavan deployed a full artillery regiment against Camp Carroll with supporting infantry units, showing their full intention to take the camp. The Pavan and ARVN had exchanged artillery fire, but South Vietnamese resistance was gradually worn down as ARVN artillerymen began seeking shelter against the Pavan's devastatingly accurate 130mm guns. 24 to 5, the Pavan launched several attacks, overrunning nearby posts at KGO, Fuller, and Nui Baho. 247 to 9, they also seized the military service road from Mylork through Camp Carroll to Camlo, surrounding the base and making it dependent on aerial resupply. 250 The Pavan defeated attempts to reopen Route 9, wiping out two companies and forcing the survivors back into the base. By the morning of the 2nd of April Camp Carroll, was completely surrounded by the Pavan, 29 morale at Camp Carroll had dropped after suffering casualties and a perceived lack of fire support, as a result Ding began negotiations with the Pavan and then informed his American advisors that the camp, would surrender to the Pavan. 259 As the senior advisor to the ARVN 56th Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel William Camper refused to go through with the surrender. 
He decided to leave Camp Carroll along with three officers and they were rescued by a U.S. Army CH-47. On 2 April 1972, Camp Carroll was officially surrendered to the Paven, with a white flag raised over the main gate of the camp, 259-1500 ARVN troops were captured along with 22 artillery pieces, including a six-gun battery of M107 175mm guns and numerous Quad 50s and Twin 40s, the largest artillery assemblage in I-Corps. Following the surrender, a B-52 strike was ordered against Camp Carroll. However, it was too late as the Paven had already moved the M107 guns out of the camp, 30. Chapter 2 Section 2, Dong Ha On 30 March 1972 the 258th Marine Brigade was deployed to Dong Ha to support the 3rd Division, 43 early on the morning of 1 April the 4th Vietnamese Marine Corps Battalion abandoned Firebase Sarge and retreated to My Lork Camp. 44 to 5 by the 1st of April the Paven had broken through the ARVN defensive positions along the DMZ and north of the Kamlo River and fragmented ARVN units and terrified civilians began withdrawing to Dong Ha, 45 General Gyai. Ordered a withdrawal of the 3rd Division south of the Kua Viet River in order for his troops to reorganize a new defensive line, regional and popular forces would secure the area from the coast to 5 kilometers inland, the 57th Regiment would hold the area from there to Dong Ha, the 1st Armored Brigade including the 20th Tank Regiment would hold Dong Ha, the 2nd Regiment reinforced by an armored cavalry squadron would hold Kam Lo. While the 56th Regiment supported by the 11th Armored Cavalry Squadron would hold Camp Carroll. Extending the line south the 147th Marine Brigade would hold My Lork and secure the high ground along Route 9 between Cam Lo and My Lork, 27 by 11 o'clock on 2 April the ARVN 20th Tank Regiment, moved forward to Dong Ha to support the 3rd Marine Battalion and 25th Marine Brigade in and around the town and defend the crucial road and rail bridges across the Kua Viet River. 50-2 Marine Anglico units called in naval gunfire to hit Paven forces near the bridges on the north bank of the river and destroyed four PT-76 amphibious tanks east of Dong Ha. More tanks were hit by a Republic of Vietnam Air Force A-1 Skyraider before it was shot down. 53 at midday Paven tanks attempted to force the road bridge but six tanks were destroyed by fire from the ARVN 20th Tanks M48S, 55 at approximately 1300 hours Captain John Ripley an advisor to the Vietnamese Marines swung under the road bridge and spent three hours installing demolition charges to destroy the bridge. The bridge was blown up at 1630 and the damaged railway bridge was destroyed around the same time temporarily halting the Paven advance. Naval gunfire and a B-52 strike were soon directed at Paven forces gathered on the northern bank, 56 to 60 at 1800 hours a USAF EB-66 was shot down west of Dong Ha and a no-fire zone was imposed around the area allowing the Paven to capture the Kamlo bridge intact, 61 to 3 over the next two weeks Paven forces kept up a barrage of artillery, mortar and small arms fire on the ARVN positions and infiltrated small units across the river in boats. 65 On 7 April the Marines withdrew from Dong Ha leaving the defense to the 1st ARVN Armored Brigade, 20th Tank Regiment, the 4th and 5th Ranger Groups and the 57th Regiment, 68. At dawn on 9 April the Paven launched an attack, led by tanks, against Firebase Pedro southwest of Quang Tri. The Paven tanks had outrun their infantry support, and nine tanks were lost in a minefield around Pedro. An armored task force of 8 M48S and 12 M113S from the ARVN 20th Tank Regiment were dispatched from I-2 to support the Marines at Pedro. At the same time a flight of Runaf A-1 Skyraiders arrived overhead and destroyed five tanks, 68-9 when the ARVN armor arrived they destroyed five T-54s for no losses and drove one captured Type 59 tank back to I-2. On 10, and the 11th of April further Paven attacks on Pedro were repulsed at a cost of over 200 Paven estimated killed, 70 on the 18th of April the Paven 308th Division attacking from the southwest attempted to outflank Dong Ha but were repulsed, 74 to 5 on the 28th of April the commander of the 20th Tank Regiment withdrew from Dong Ha to deal with a Paven force threatening I-2, 
Seeing the tanks leaving the soldiers of the 57th Regiment panicked and abandoned their positions leading to the collapse of the ARVN. Defensive Line, 78 The VNMC 7th Battalion was sent to I-2 to help defend the base, 78 at 2 o'clock on 29 April the Paven attacked the ARVN positions north and south of the base and the ARVN defenses began to crumble, by midday on 30 April the 3rd Division commander ordered a withdrawal from I-2 to a defensive line along the south of the Thatchan River and the withdrawal was completed late that day, 79 to 80. Chapter 2 Section 3 Quang Tri. On the 1st of May General Guy decided that any further defense of the city was pointless and that the ARVN should withdraw to a defensive line along the Maichan River, 82-3 as the 3rd Division headquarters departed the city in an armored convoy, the US advisors remained in the Quang Tri Citadel, however the command element finding Highway 1 blocked by refugees and paven ambushes, soon returned to the citadel and requested helicopter evacuation. By late afternoon USAF helicopters from the 37th Aerospace Rescue and Recovery Squadron and Army helicopters evacuated all remaining forces in the citadel, 83-4 by the 2nd of May all of Quang Tri province had fallen to the Paven and they were threatening Hue, 90 approximately 2,000 South Vietnamese civilian refugees were killed in the indiscriminate Paven shelling of Highway 1. Chapter 3, Aftermath the fall of Quang Tri gave North Vietnam its first major victory of the 1972 offensive. The North Vietnamese immediately imposed their authority in the province, as collective farms were set up and strict rules were forced on the villagers. Many victims and villagers eventually fled. According to Gary D. Murfin, one of the lead writers to have done a survey on Vietnamese refugees after 1975, the province was an area of particularly dense Catholic concentration, many of whom were anti-communist. He estimated that 41% fled the area in fear of communist reprisals, 37% feared fighting, shelling, and bombing, and others fled because they were a family related to an ARVN soldier, or were at one point landowners. While the North Vietnamese tried to consolidate their rule over the liberated zones, South Vietnamese General NGO Quang Truon was drawing up a plan to retake the province. The stage was set for the Second Battle of Quang Tri which would last from 28 June to 16 September 1972, where the ARVN would retake their positions. Although the North Vietnamese eventually lost most of southern Quang Tri province, the northern parts of the province would remain in their control until the end of the war in 1975. 